Hi there! Today we're going to go over acorns and learn a little bit about this wonderful seed and the tree that it comes from. So you can go ahead and get out your All About Acorn sheet that was in your garden kit that looks like this. If you have an acorn, great, you can go ahead and get that out. We're going to be doing a scientific drawing of it. If you have a magnifying glass, you can get that out as well that was in your garden kit. And then we're going to read a story that is called As an Oak Tree Grows. And this is all about some wonderful changes that an oak tree sees over its lifetime. And it's a great book to kind of give you a different perspective on trees and how long they've been around and what they might have seen in their lifetime. So if you can get all that out, you're also going to want to get out a whiteboard or a sheet of paper to do your scientific drawing on and you can follow along. All right, let's get going. All right, so hopefully by now you have out your whiteboard you have out something to write with, you've got your acorn, and you've got your All About Acorn sheet to use as reference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about acorns, okay? If you have one that you managed to bring back from a material pickup or that you found out in a yard or in a park, that's great, you're gonna go ahead and get a look at it, okay? A lot of them that we find probably look like this. They most likely do not have this little top part, the cupule, okay? And that's totally fine. So if you just have a portion of an acorn, you're not going to worry about it. That's totally fine. Not a problem at all. But the acorn has a couple different parts, as you can see down here. Okay. This is the actual seed where the seed is. This is not going to grow into anything. So again, if you don't have this top, which is also called the cupule, okay, don't worry about it. That's totally fine. You don't really need it. So each year, one oak tree can drop up to 10,000 acorns. So Hiawatha Park, where we went and got these, has several oak trees, probably eight to 10 oak trees. So you're talking about 80,000 acorns to drop on the ground. And acorns are a key part of the ecosystem for a lot of animals because they eat them. So if you've ever been over to a park that drops a lot of acorns on the ground, chances are you're gonna see a ton of squirrels there. You're gonna see probably maybe some mice and rats if you stick around long enough or you're there at night. Okay, and other little critters that really use these acorns to sustain themselves throughout winter. And so what we're going to do today is we are going to do, draw a diagram, a scientific drawing, of our acorn. Okay, and if you want to get an up-close look at the different parts of the acorn, you can see that the, the cupule, right, has some different bumps to it. It's got a different texture. Okay, remember we kind of hold magnifying glass like this. We don't hold it right up to our eyes. And you can see that the pericarp, right, this outside part of the acorn, this is the actual seed and the covering of the seed. It's pretty hard, number one, so it's not going to be easy for us to break in and see the seed inside. And that also gives us some insight into those squirrels, right? They probably have some sharp little teeth if they're eating through that shell. The actual acorn itself is inside that shell, and it kind of, it's a lighter color. This one's split in two but the actual seed is inside this outside. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna do our scientific drawing and show the different parts of our acorn. So we're gonna go ahead and get out our whiteboard, okay? And if you have an acorn to use an, an example, great, you're gonna have that handy. If not, you're just gonna follow along. And you can also use this handy sheet too because I went ahead and I labeled all the different parts here on the sheet, okay? So we wanna do our shapes first. So the pericarp, or the outside shell of that acorn, okay, is right here. And so for the younger kids, you're going to kind of do the shape. For the older kids, you're going to label and actually put down the scientific names, like the pericarp. All right, so this would be that. You also want to convey the different textures. You can tell that this is a very smooth, very hard shell on the outside. So I kind of convey that, that it's smooth by doing two little lines like that. Right? And now we're going to be doing this top, which is called the cupule. I like to remember it because I think of it as the cup that a mouse would drink out of if they had a tea party. Right? If little mice were having a tea party, this would probably be the cup that they would use to drink their tea or hot cocoa out of. So it's called the cupule. So to draw that, we're going to draw just a straight line across. And we're just going to go ahead and do like a little half circle. And then the cupule has the stem part. That's how it attaches to the tree. So you can see this little stem right here. So we're just going to do a little rectangle on top. Perfect. And so the cupule 
has different little bumps on it, which are actually called scales. Think of a fish, right? They kind of looks like fish scales if you get a really up close look at this cupule. Okay, and so you can see it's definitely bumpy. So in our drawing, we wanna be able to show that, hey, this part of the acorn has a different texture than the than this pericarp, the, the actual seed covering. Okay, and we drew the lines to show this was nice and smooth. So to show that it's bumpy, we can do some dots maybe, right, little scales, or you can do some, I like to do kind of little cloud things, okay, little scallops to show that they're bumpy. Okay, I've had some people do like hash marks, which means like little crisscross diagonals. Okay, it's totally up to you however you want to do it. And so now we have a great view of our acorn. Okay, we have the different parts of our acorn. And so for the younger kids, we're going to go ahead and practice writing our A or acorn in the middle. So you remember what you drew. Okay, we can draw it up top too. A C O R N. Now for the older kids, I'm going to challenge you. And what I want you to do is I want you to do a scientifically labeled drawing. So you're going to go ahead and reference this sheet. Okay, and we're going to do arrows to the different parts. So this is the stem. And this is the cupule. So you can draw an arrow to that. You can write cupule. Okay, and then the scales, you can kind of circle one to get an up close look like a little magnifying glass and write scale or cup scale, okay? And then last but not least, we're gonna label this here and write pericarp, P-E-R-I-C-A-R-P. And then I was teaching a class, uh, one of my first lessons, and a student had a great idea. They said, well, that's all great, but the whole point of an acorn is that it's a seed. Why don't we have the seed label? And I thought, you know what, that is a great point. So we can kind of do like a little dotted line to show maybe that you're looking inside it. Okay, and you can do an arrow and put seed. Because yes, that is the whole point of an acorn is that it's a seed for the oak tree, right? And oak trees can live to be 200 to 700 years old. The oldest one that I was able to find online was in Louisiana and it was 1500 years old. So oak trees can grow to be very big, number one, but also very old, right? They are wonderful trees that definitely are a food source. The Native Americans would eat acorns. I grew up in California, and so the acorns were a big food source for a lot of the tribes there over the years. Um, and so that was very important. You can see, I'll show you kind of one of the ones that I found at Hiawatha Park. This one's been eaten. So you can kind of see the shell on the outside that something ate through a crack. And then on the inside, you can see that seed might not be the greatest, right? There was a couple different parts to it, but the seed is on the inside, the nut with the meat. And so that's a great thing. If you can try to crack open your acorn and see the inside, think about how hard it is for you to crack that open. And so the animal adaptations that some of these critters have to be able to break open the acorns is really cool to think about, right? They need some sharp teeth or they need to figure out how to drop them. Okay, so next up, we are going to go ahead and we are going to read As an Oak Tree Grows, which is by Brian Paras, and it is the story of an oak tree over the years. And so you can go ahead and you can keep your drawing out, and if you want to add to it and draw an oak tree, I've had several students do that. That's always a fun idea, okay? Um, you can go ahead and draw an oak leaf. This is one of the leaves okay, that I found on the ground. You can see how big this leaf is compared with how small the acorn really is, right? The seed for the oak tree. And then when you're out and about over the next few weeks, you can definitely start to look at, see what other kinds of seeds you can find. This is another one from Hiawatha Park. This is a chestnut, okay? You can see a lot of people ask if it's a hedgehog or a porcupine. It's a seed. On the inside is a chestnut, which it fell out, but it is over here. So the seed is inside, okay? Some people roast different types of chestnuts. Definitely do not eat chestnuts unless you check with your adult first. Okay, we don't eat anything we don't know. But sometimes there are holiday carols that talk about uh, roasting chestnuts. So this is what they're doing. They, they take the inside nut and roast it and eat it. Okay. Another type of seed that you're going to find this time of year all over the ground, or seed pod, okay, is this, which hopefully most of you can kind of see. These are small ones, but these are pine cones. 
pine cones have seeds and I've these guys have been drying out on my desk for a while and so the seeds have started to fall out let's see if I can find one and they are very teeny teeny seeds you can see right here let's get rid of that so I don't know can you see this little teeny teeny seed that is a seed from a pine cone it's very small it has kind of like a wing like structure to it because it likes to flutter in the wind that's what it's designed to do okay but that is a pine cone seed it's super teeny and each little scale of the pine cone has one of those seeds so that's something very fun to be on the lookout for as well as you wander around over the next few weeks outside okay so next up we're going to go ahead and read our story so you can work on adding to your scientific drawing if you'd like with an oak tree or you can just go ahead and listen to the story Okay, so this is the book, As an Oak Tree Grows. This is the story of an oak tree and about the wonderful times that it spends and all the changes that it sees over its lifetime. Because as we think about different types of plants, some of them have been here much longer than we have. And so it's fun to think about all the possible changes that a tree has seen in its lifetime. On a sunny late summer day, a young boy planted an acorn in the ground. You can see the acorns right there getting dropped into a hole. And you can look around and you see a hut right here. You see a canoe. You see lots of forest. You see some animals. Later that year, an oak tree sprouted up from the earth into the air and light. So it's right here. Okay, and so now you have a few ships. Each fall it will shed its leaves and each spring new ones will grow. And so if you can see kind of down in the corner right here, it says the year is 1775. So we're gonna follow this little oak tree over the years. The boy no longer lived here. New people came and made their homes around the oak tree. They cleared the hillsides where forests once stood. The wood was used for building and to burn in fireplaces, but the oak tree was left standing. So now we're in the year 1800. And you can see there's some town buildings now. It's changed a little bit, right, since the last time we saw it. And the hillsides have been cleared. And there are some horses and buggies. No cars. Cars weren't invented yet. The oak tree had room to spread wide and grew upward and outward. Sometimes snow was very heavy and a branch would break off. So now we're near 1825. As the oak tree grew, everyone and everything was on the move. Children grew, some stayed to work on the farms and others left to work in factories. Ships came and went, large engines rumbled along steel rails. Birds perched in the oak tree to rest from long migrations. Some stayed and made new homes and others flew on. More people arrived and built new houses and buildings. So you can see here, there's now a train going through town, right? which was a new invention. And plowing the fields, still no cars. Still no lamp posts, no cell phones or computers. Some years little rain fell. Hills and fields were dry where trees had once stood and shaded the ground from the sun's rays. The oak tree's roots reached far underground for water as its leaves wilted. Farmers conserved what little they had for thirsty livestock until the rain fell again. So livestock are like the cows and the pigs and the horses. So now we're in the year 1875. Ooh, now we're in the year 1900, which was 120 years ago. Electricity came through wires that were strung over hills and through valleys. It powered street lamps and homes. The land twinkled with lights as stars faded in the night sky. The oak tree grew slowly and steadily while all around it life sped by. People rode in cars to go to work and visit friends, to go shopping or just go for a drive. So you can see there's cars now. So now the year is 1925, so almost 100 years ago. You can see there's a lot more houses in town, right? Looks like some people ice skating over here. Soon the air was filled with jet contrails and radio waves and sound waves of beeping cars, barking dogs, zooming motorboats, whistling trains, and music. The oak tree is 200 years old. It has shed its leaves and grown new ones every year. 
Animals, birds, and insects have made homes in its folds and holes and branches. Now in the year 1975, so about 50 years ago. The oak tree with its strong roots, trunks, and limbs has survived many storms over its lifetime. Now a fog rolls in and a big storm is on the way. So now we're in the year 2000. I don't know if you can see down here, which is pretty much when this book was written, a little bit after. The storm is powerful and the oak tree is split in two. It does not survive the storm. People come to look where the great oak tree once stood. The tree is cut into pieces to be used for furniture, firewood, and mulch. So you can see it's just a stump now. But look how much that town has changed, right? It's got lots of buildings. It's got airplanes. It has cars and trucks, computers, cell phones, compared to when it was planted and there was nothing there. A new day dawns and once again the ground is warm and welcoming as a new oak tree grows. So you can see there's another acorn that has sprouted, right? And so maybe it's going to grow in that place for the next 200 years. And the way you can tell how old a tree is, you can kind of see in this picture, is a tree has rings. So if you were to cut it open, each ring is a year of its life. And so I happen to have a little tree stump here. So you can kind of see on this tree stump to use as an example. Let's see if I can focus this a little bit more. But each of these rings, oops, it's not focusing. Each of those rings is a year of this tree's life. Okay, so what you can do is you can count outwards and count each one and figure out how old that tree is. So that's something cool to be able to do too. If you see a tree, unfortunately, that has to get cut down. Sometimes they get sick or sometimes the lightning comes and maybe it, it breaks the tree in such a way it can't recover, right? You can go and you can try to count the rings and see how old that tree was and think about all the changes that that tree saw in its lifetime. All right. So the last thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead, and if you have an acorn for material distribution, you can go ahead and see if you can get it to germinate. In nature, only 1 in 10,000 acorns become a new oak tree. So it's not an easy process, right? Nature's fighting all sorts of things. It's fighting little squirrels that want to eat them. It's fighting people that probably take them up and eat them, or people that put them in the yard waste bin. Okay, So only 1 in 10,000 acorns will grow up to become a new oak tree. So it's not an easy process, but we're going to see, since we have some free time, if we can get one of these little acorns to germinate. And so to do that, you're going to go ahead and you are going to see if your acorn sinks or floats. Now, when we did our pumpkin unit, we found out that all pumpkins floated because they had air on the inside, right? Acorns are the opposite. Acorns are supposed to sink. So you want to see if your acorn floats or sinks. Okay, and so to do that, you're going to go ahead and get a glass full of water. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and put your acorn in. All right. So just drop it in the water. You want it to sink. If it sinks, great. It has a better chance of becoming a new oak tree. If it doesn't sink, that's still fine. Maybe we can see if we can get it to germinate. It just means maybe a little critter got in there and some air got in there with that little critter. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and drop it in. So this acorn you can see floats. I had another one that sank. Okay. So this one is actually probably more airtight, right? There's no air in that. There's no bugs. There's nothing else in there other than the seed, okay? So this is the one that probably has a better chance of germinating. Germinating means go from seed to plant, sprouting, okay? And so what you're going to do, if your acorn sinks, right, it probably has a good chance of germinating. If your acorn floats, you can go ahead and still see if you can get it to germinate. But what you're going to do is you're going to take it out of the water and you can put it in your fridge or freezer. And what you're going to do is you are going to play Mother Nature and trick your acorn, right? Most acorns, they will winter. They know that there's a winter season and so they're expecting that cold. And so you put it into the fridge to kind of simulate a little bit of a winter season for it. And then when you bring it out after maybe two to three weeks, you can put it on a nice little windowsill. Okay, so it gets some sunshine. And then hopefully what's going to happen is it's going to sprout. And what is very cool is that once it starts to sprout, okay, the seed is so strong that it's going to go ahead and it cracks this outside shell because it starts expanding. And so you'll see a little crack in your shell 
and then you'll get a little sprout probably within the next week. Okay, so that's what you can kind of expect. And then from there, you can just go ahead and make sure it gets a little bit of water and you can probably stick it in the ground and see if it starts growing an oak tree. I've had a couple students that were really worried that they'd have a big, huge tree in their yard within a year or two. And that's not the case. It takes a really long time to grow oak trees. So you're not gonna have a big tree until you're well past high school and college or whatever else you choose to decide to do, okay? So don't worry about that. But it's something fun to see if we can make our seeds germinate.